The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company. Hi, I'm Brian Kenny, and welcome to ESPN Sports Figures, teaming up sports with science. First up, Team Discovery's Tom Danielson joins our Marissa Copeland to take a bite out of calories. the car go but on a bicycle the engine is you most of us know how many miles to the gallon our car gets but how many of us know how many miles to the gallon our bodies get hmm? this guy's a pretty good engine this is cyclist Tom Danielson he holds the hill climbing record from the Bob Cook Memorial Mount Evans hill climbing race he also rides for Team Discovery, and in 2005, he won the Tour of Georgia. But how many miles to the gallon does he get? So Tom, how long is the Tour to Georgia? It's six days long, 650 miles overall, a little over 100 miles per day. Wow, so you're definitely gonna need some fuel to ride like that. Exactly. But instead of gasoline, our bodies use food for energy. And the energy content in food is measured in calories. So to figure out what kind of mileage your body's getting, we need to figure out how many calories you use. Perfect. Calories are a word we hear all the time. Like, if you wanna lose weight, you might eat less to eat fewer calories, or you might exercise to burn more calories. Calories just a unit of energy. When you're using energy, you are using calories. Anything with energy can be rated in calories. A gallon of gasoline has 31 million calories. Of course, if you drank it, it would kill you. One ounce of chocolate has 145 calories. That means it would take 213,793 ounces of chocolate to equal the energy of one gallon of gas. At 50 cents an ounce, that means it's gonna cost over $100,000 to equal the same energy you get in a gallon of gas. Chocolate wouldn't be a very cost-effective way of powering your car. Plus, it would wreck your engine. Just about anything you get to eat or drink these days tells you how much energy is in it. Like this bag of cashews has 840 calories in it. That's how much food energy it has. But how do they figure out how much energy is in a cashew? Okay guys, how does it work? How do you figure out calories? You use something called a calorimeter, like this one, to burn the food. So you actually just burn it? Right. First you take a known amount of water, let's say 100 grams, and then you record the temperature of the water. Okay. Uh, 19 degrees Celsius. Then you weigh what you're trying to find the calories for, like that cashew. Okay. Three grams. Now we burn it in the calorimeter, which is just the container so you don't lose all of the heat energy. Uh, you're, you're actually going to set it on fire? Right. Okay, hang on. Safety first. Once it's lit, you have to get the water over it right away. When the cashew burns out, you take the temperature of the water again. Okay. It's 31 degrees Celsius. Wow. And now you can weigh what's left of the cashew. One gram. Now you know how many calories are in two grams of cashew. What? How? A calories define how many degrees in Celsius the water can be heated. Mm -hmm. One calorie raises one gram of water, one degree Celsius. You can use the equation Q equals mass of water times delta, which is the change in temperature. You solve it, you get Q equals 1,200. That's how much energy the cashew gave to the water. How many calories? Wow, two grams gives you 1,200 calories. That's a lot of calories. I mean, imagine this half-pound bag. 
It's got to give you something like 135,600 calories. Yeah. The average person only needs to eat around 2,400 calories a day. That's just two cashews. But everybody knows you can't live on just two cashews. Something's wrong. Hi, can I get an order of fries, please? Hi, how you doing today? Good. Good, here's your friend. Ooh, here's the thing about calories. There you go. Mmm. Oh, can I have some ketchup, please? Oh, yes. Yeah. There you go. Winko. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you know that there are 15,000 calories in this package of ketchup? Yeah. It's not because ketchup is so high in calories. It's because when we say one calorie, we actually mean 1,000 calories or one kilocalorie. So even though it says 15 on the package, it's actually 15,000 calories. All right, I'm moving. Thanks. Have a good day. You too. So in everyday usage, we say that the cashew has 12 calories in two grams, not 1,200 or, or 12 kilocalories. <laughs> energy is energy, whether it's caloric energy or electrical energy. And you can make conversions between different forms of energy. Like right now, I'm converting caloric energy to mechanical energy to electrical energy. If you had 100% efficiency in converting the energy, five pounds of spaghetti would give you enough electrical energy to brew a pot of coffee. Mm. Or this yellow cake with chocolate icing could power a 60 watt bulb for four and a half minutes. But how do you plug into a cake? Obviously, Tom uses a lot of energy in a race like the Tour de Georgia. That is a lot of calories. But how does our body burn food to get calories? Our bodies burn the fuel using metabolic processes. Digestion. Yeah. Mm. There are three components of the food that we eat that give us energy. Carbohydrates, protein, and fats. Think of this blender as your stomach. When we eat something, enzymes in our body go to work on it. The carbs are turned into glucose and other sugars, the fat into glycerol and other fatty acids, and the protein into amino acids. Your blood carries these molecules to your cells to use as energy. And there's lots of other non-food stuff in the food that we eat, like, like man-made stuff. Ugh, who knows where that goes? Ugh. Your body needs energy, calories, to do anything or nothing. Your BMR, basal metabolic rate, is how many calories your body needs to just be. Like most of your BMR is used just to maintain body temperature. This pot of water is 37.5 degrees Celsius. That's the same as body temperature. But if I take it off the flame, it's gradually gonna cool because the temperature out here today is about 20 degrees Celsius. To keep it at 37.5, I have to keep it on the flame. It's like what your body does with the slow combustion of food. It's like there's a little flame inside your belly. Well, sort of. Hey, Tom, did you know that you can figure out your own BMR by using this equation called the Harris-Benedict formula? Whoa, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, for men, it looks like this, and for women, it looks like this. So let's figure out your BMR. OK. All right, the first thing we need is to multiply 6.3 times your weight in pounds. Which is 129 pounds. OK, that gives us 812.7. All right, next, we multiply 12.9 times your height in inches. Well, I'm 5'10", so that's 70 inches. OK, so that gives us 903. And then the last thing we do is we multiply 6.8 times your age in years. And I'm 27 years old. That gives us 183.6. Now, we just add 66 to those numbers. Whoa, 1,598.1. That's how many calories your body uses each day just to stay alive. Whoa, but as soon as I start doing anything, I'll need more calories. Right. There are tons of calorie calculators on the web. The number of calories you burn depends on the activity you're doing and how much you weigh. So for 129 pound Tom, typing on the computer takes two calories a minute. Vacuuming, he burns five calories a minute. The butterfly stroke burns 
17 calories per minute. For Tom, a leisurely bike ride burns about 12 calories a minute. But Tom, you're not riding leisurely. What kind of speeds are you pushing in a race? No, on average, about 20 miles an hour in a race. Whoa, okay. So you got your body weight, 129 pounds, times 20 miles per hour. That's gonna give us 21 calories a minute. Wow. How long does it take you to ride each leg? About five hours. Okay, so there's 60 minutes in an hour times the five, that's 300 minutes times the 21 calories a minute. That's gonna give us 6,300 calories. Wow, that's a lot of calories. And that's on top of my BMR, which is 1,598 calories. Right, so, so you're averaging like 7,898 calories on a race day. That's a lot of calories. To get 7,898 calories, you have to eat 54 and a half ounces of chocolate. That's the size of this. Three and a half pounds. Even if you could eat that much chocolate, it's a stick. But even if you could get it down, not all calories are the same. Chocolate is a simple sugar. It'll give you calories, but not the fatty acids or the proteins your body needs. Also, a big dose of simple sugars triggers a massive response of insulin from your pancreas. Insulin is your body's way of keeping your blood sugar from getting too high. That big flood of insulin results in too little blood sugar. You know how sugar can make you crash? Oh, oh, I don't mean that kind of crash. I mean the, oh, I feel so good, I feel so good. Oh, I'm so depressed, I'm so depressed kind of crash. It's because your insulin levels are overreacting and your blood sugar level's gone down too low for a couple of hours. The legs of a bicycle tour can last five hours or more, so you'd be crashing halfway through. So Tom, do you actually eat 7,898 calories on a race day? Yep, I sure do. That's part of one of the challenges of being a pro bike racer. Well, like, what do you eat for breakfast? So we'll start the day typically with rice, eggs, and ham. Yum. Then when we get in the race or training on the bike, we use power bars. So you're actually eating while you're on the bike? Yep, you have oh. to keep putting fuel in the tank. Right. And after, to finish the day off, we'll have salad with pasta and typically a meat. Yummy, I want to come to your house for dinner. It's part of the job, eating. If Tom ate 7,898 calories a day and didn't race, you'd store the rest of those extra calories as fat. Every 3,500 calories equals one pound of fat. Now, typically, people only need about 2,500 calories a day, so if you're eating 7,898 calories, that's 5,398 extra calories. That's one and a half pounds of fat a day. That's 10 and a half pounds a week. That's over 40 pounds a month. Boy, fat is a fast. So just how efficient an engine is a cyclist? Well, we said before that a gallon of gasoline has 31 million calories, so if your car gets 25 miles to the gallon, just divide 31 million calories by the 25 miles they will take you, and we get 1,240,000 calories to the mile. Tom's only using 63 calories to go a mile. Forget about hybrids. If you run out of gas in your car, that's it, it's over. What happens to your body if you run out of, um, if you burn more calories than you use? Well, a lot of complex processes kick in. First of all, your liver uses glucose from its glycogen storages. Mm -hmm. After that, your body uses fats, which are stored previously. Oh, that's why you can lose weight by burning fat because you burn more calories than you take in. Exactly, unlike a car, your body can use quite a bit more than what's put in the tank that day. Nice, well, cheers. Cheers. Okay, guys, so what did we learn? That calories are a unit of potential energy. And in common usage, we say calories. But something with 10 calories really has mm, 10 kilocalories, or 10,000 calories. And if you burn one calorie, its energy will raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. That's the definition of a calorie. And your BMR, basal metabolic rate, is the amount of calories your body needs just to survive. Okay. Whew. I think I've had enough calories. Well, that's it. We'd like to thank Tom Danielson and our students 
Brady, Robbie, Dane, and Brad from Horizon High School for helping us out here today on ESPN Sports Figures, The Calorie Cycle. Recently, Sports Center hit the road visiting 50 states in 50 days, and Sports Figures hits to ride. Welcome to Port Republic, Maryland, for an event that's been around longer than the Preakness, the 139th Annual Calvert County Jousting Tournament, believed to be the oldest sporting event in the entire country. Jousting is the official state sport of Maryland, but the only knights and maidens here are of the modern day variety. Long before Europeans even came to the New World, the age of medieval knights flourished in Europe. Knights on horseback were a revolution in warfare, and for hundreds of years, the battlefield's most formidable weapon. The only targets for these jousters, tiny rings, which may appear less threatening than an oncoming rider, until you approach one at full gallop. Take that lance, lean over, and catch that ring. Ring jousting requires a rider to make his way through three arches in nine seconds. The military role of the knight was brought to a close in the mid-1300s when gunpowder came to Europe. The knight's battlefield skills became feats of prowess and entertainment in tournaments using a quintain. Riding at the rings was introduced, and by the 1600s, when Lord Baltimore founded Maryland, the joust was all about the rings, and it still is today. As the competition heats up, the more experienced riders spear rings that get smaller and smaller. Eventually, they become no bigger than a nickel, with holes the size of a lifesaver. They've been jousting in Maryland about as long as they've had settlers in Maryland. But jousting in the southern states didn't really take hold until the 1800s, when then popular riders like Sir Walter Scott and Lord Byron revitalized the romantic era of chivalry. And so you have the Calvert County Joust, starting in 1866 and continuing today. A slice of medieval times that lives on in Maryland sports. For over 10 years, ESPN has been proud to present the award-winning sports figures. And we want to thank all the athletes who have donated their time to help put your brain in the game. We hope you've enjoyed ESPN Sports Figures. Until next time, keep your brain in the game. I'm Brian Kenny. Thanks for watching. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. For a free teacher's curriculum, to order the Sports Figures series, or lots of other fun stuff, visit our website at sportsfigures.espn.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in the sports. Sports figures, put your brain in the game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company.